So we swapped the sensors and we just cleared the faults. As you can see, it's green. Oh, there it goes. We were, it was green, that means it showed no fault codes and we were waiting for a fault code to pop up and it just did now, as you can see in yellow here, right? And yellow means ECU with fault memory. So let's go see what fault code popped up and right now we're hoping that the intake camshaft is faulty. And nope, it still shows the Vanos exhaust actuator movement. So uh, in this case, uh, it's not the sensor, it's gonna be the solenoid, okay? Uh, there's two different uh, timing controllers. You got the sensor that controls uh, timing and then you got the actuator that controls timing and that's the that's the uh, part that actually does most of the work because that solenoid operates under oil pressure and if it's not producing the right pressures it will cause timing to go off therefore multiple misfires because it's unlikely that each cylinder is faulty right it's never uh, all cylinders that can go bad it's always a common denominator that will cause all four cylinders to misfire okay and that common denominator could be this exhaust actuator and an actuator being the actual solenoid okay so if you want more uh, depth info on this sensor you click info and you see here again conditions could be limp mode no adaptation faults no oil pressure warning light and the camshaft position B over retarded uh, a lot of times if you don't change your oil uh, this can affect the solenoid uh, because again uh, it's operating under oil pressure and the uh, if the oil is dirty it'll cause restrictions in the solenoid and lines and passages so now we're gonna find out where the solenoid is and remove it and see what's going on with it Okay, so let's hit calculate test plan. And for this, you want the car uh, in the engine off, ignition on. Okay. So we're gonna go over to Vanos solenoid exhaust. And display the ABL test plan. Now keep in mind uh, when we first removed the exhaust camshaft sensor we saw a piece of metal attached to it uh, that could be uh, pieces of the engine internally so it could be basically anything it could be a camshaft lobe that, that that's rounded off or maybe it could be some sort of gear. So uh, that's not a, a normal thing to see, uh, a piece of metal like that. But metal shavings is common to, to attach itself to that magnet. Okay. So here are the camshaft sensors. Here are the solenoids. This is what they look like here. There's two of them, one for the intake and one for the exhaust. And as you see here, number three is the exhaust, and number two is the intake, okay? And it says, the variable camshaft timing control serves to enhance the torque in the lower and middle engine speed range. The Vanos solenoid valves activates a Vanos unit on the intake side. The Vanos solenoid values are controlled by the DME control uh, unit, which is the computer of the car. It controls the oil pressure going to the solenoids uh, well, the, the solenoid controls the pressure, but the signal comes from the, from the computer, actually. Okay, and it, it works on the same network as the uh, Valvetronic, which controls valve lift, intake valve lift. Uh, so, let's go to the wiring diagram. And in the wiring diagram, you can uh, zoom in on the location of the valve solenoid and Normally there's a hyperlink that you can click on to where it will direct you to the solenoid's location or any component's location. So this is why ISTA D, the BMW factory scanner is so much more better than 
you know, any aftermarket advanced scanners, uh, although some of them are good, such as Alltail or Snap-on, but nothing beats the original, okay? And this is the original style uh, wiring diagram where it shows uh, color, codes, uh, tracings, uh, ground and power, all of that. So here we go. This is the two vanos solenoids. You have the intake side here and you have the exhaust side here. So here's the hyperlink and you just click on that and it should pop up the location of that solenoid. Okay. Now this is a really small car so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Hopefully it's not in a crazy spot. And there it is. It's uh, y two, uh, Y6276. That's the location and the X is the connector to it. Okay, that's the difference between Y and X. And it looks like it's at the front of the engine by the oil dipstick here. Okay, this is the exhaust manifold. So if we walk over to the car, it should be right there in front. So here's the, here's the uh, oil dipstick and there's your solenoid right there. That's, your, that's the connector and that's the solenoid there. Be careful, uh, this car is very hot. You, you wanna make sure it's cooled down because the exhaust manifold can burn you. See that sign there, that's a warning la uh, label. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check that connector, make sure it's getting uh, its signal, its proper voltages. And a lot of times these solenoids can leak and it looks like there's some evidence of oil leak already. You see there's like uh, fresh traces of, of wet oil. Maybe that uh, solenoid is leaking out losing pressure okay so uh looks like you have to remove the the oil dip step guide looks like it's just one bolt 10 millimeters down there then after that we should be able to remove the connector and the solenoid itself and it looks like the solenoid takes a a 10 millimeter also right below there okay so again you definitely want to uh wear gloves and be careful of the the exhaust manifold 